The Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture present Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson. Also presented by Adina Spring South, Daily Racing Farm, Double Diamond Farm, Getaway Farm, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Ocala Breeders Sales Company, Pleasant Acres Stallions, Valerie Daly of Showcase Properties, and Woodford Thoroughbreds. Hello everyone, Carl Nathy filling in for John Henderson on this edition of Thoroughbred Week featuring the 20th running of the Dubai World Cup and an undefeated Kentucky Derby prospect in the Grade 1 Florida Derby. We begin at Gulfstream Park with the Grade 3 Skip Away Stakes. Commissioner, the 7-5 favorite, Larry Colmus picks up the call. Commissioner moves up alongside of Senor Quisqueano around the far turn. They are stride for stride on the lead. Edgar Zayas pumping on Senor Quisqueano to hold off Commissioner. They're four in front of Encryption as they come to the top of the stretch. They ran three quarters in one, 13 and four, and they're into the stretch. And it's Commissioner on the outside and Senor Quisqueano at the rail. These two, six lengths ahead of the rest. Commissioner ahead in front. Senor Quisqueano is going to fight them all the way. It's Commissioner and Senor Quisqueano. The two of them come into the final 70 yards. Commissioner, Senor Quisqueano won't go away. They'll bob heads to the wire and Commissioner won it. Commissioner out finishes Senor Quisqueano by a neck. Javier Castellano, the winning jockey in 158 and three. The first stakes victory for Commissioner who ran second by a neck to Tonelist in the 2014 Belmont Stakes. The four-year-old colt by AP Indy was bred in Kentucky by his owner, Windstar Farm. Trained by Todd Pletcher, Commissioner has earned $617,000. For all of your insurance needs, a specialist at Jerry Parks Insurance Group is there to assist you with 40 years of exceptional coverage. Look for Jerry Parks, John Cassie, or Kelly Weeks at the two-year-old sales. Two fairgrounds for the grade two New Orleans handicap. Moreno, the six to five favorite, John G. Dooley has the call. A half mile for Go Go Rocket, 47 and two fifths seconds as they enter the turn. And with three furlongs to go, a move by Moreno outside of Albano. And it's Moreno who's nosed in front of Albano at the two and a half. Moreno going for home. Go Go Rocket is third, a Ford. Red Rifle, six in the front. Moreno wide, but looming in front. Albano cuts and runs for home two. Three quarters, one minute 11 and one fifth seconds. Moreno, Albano battles toward the fence of Ford. Red Rifle looking to gain ground between horses, but in deep water. Far outside, call me George. One Kingsman, Indy Cott is next. It's Moreno. Moreno kept to the task by Joe Telemo. Albano toward the inside. Here's call me George. Call me George. Call me George. 22 to 1, Call Me George gets up to defeat Albano by half a length. A 1 2 finish by Keeneland Sales graduates. Career win number 2000 for Fairgrounds leading jockey Jams Graham. Time of the race, 151 flat. The ex claimer records his first stakes victory. The five year old horse by point given was bred in Kentucky by Margot Farm and Barry Irwin and was a $4,500 Keeneland January yearling. Owners Clint Joyner, Matthew Bond, and Jim Curry claimed the winner for $62,500 at Churchill Downs last summer and turned him over to trainer Grant Forster. Call Me George has earned $415,000. James Graham with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Vans, the safest way to the winner's circle. Watch Thoroughbred Week replays online at tbreadweek.com. First Samurai is America's best sire son of champion Giants Causeway. Already the sire of a champion, First Samurai has grade one winners on both coasts. A smashing fifth win for her. But it will be Justin Phillips to win the Vanderbilt by two. Lee still running strong for the wire. And Lee has won the dawn under Joel Rosario. That is a new track record. First Samurai, a proven sire of quality at Claiborne Farm. Our farm is going to be primarily a service organization. We will board horses for a number of different clients throughout the United States and Canada. We will focus on breeding mares. We also will be doing sales prep either for the yearling sales here in Kentucky or for the breeding stock sales also here in the fall and in the early winter. We stand one stallion here, Greeley's Conquest. Endeavor Farm prides itself on being able to 
give individual care to every animal here. In this game, there's no room for second best. To be the best, you need the best. Actistatin Equine, clinically proven joint protection. Three U.S. patents and two clinical trials prove Actistatin Equine is the most powerful joint formula on the planet. Superior absorption helps your athlete lubricate, strengthen, renew. No other product even comes close. Find your best with Actistat. Ask your veterinarian or call for a free consultation. 866-587-7333. Combining the legacy of Kentucky with the fertile breeding ground of Florida, Woodford Thoroughbreds proudly introduces in 2014 Warfront's best son to stand at stud, multiple graded stakes winner, sold at and juvenile grade one winner of the hopeful stakes currency swap woodford thoroughbreds where a new generation of horse racing excellence has begun Sunny Florida produces champions from start to finish. Florida produced Breeders' Cup Classic winner Mucho Macho Man. Florida is one of the premier breeding regions and training centers in the world. We are a leading prep center for derby winners and contenders. We boast of premier veterinary research centers and three major racetracks. Florida has the largest two-year-old in training sale in the world, selling horses six times annually. Florida is proudly represented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. Sunny Florida produces champions from start to finish. People want to know what's so special about Ocala. Centrally located between Orlando and Jacksonville, Ocala's equine industry has many incentives to breed, raise, and train thoroughbreds. Discover Ocala. Reach out to showcase properties, and we'll show you why we love where we live. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with three graded turf stakes in this segment. We begin with fillies and mares at Gulfstream Park in the grade two Honey Fox Stakes. Coffee Click, the two to one favorite, Larry Colmus picks up the call. Lori Store still at the back of the field and still about nine or ten from front running at Stanford, whose lead is down to a half a length. Party now is getting closer, and so too are Coffee Click and Sandiva. These four together after a 47 and one half mile. And Kitty Wine is just in behind them, saving all the ground in fifth. And Marlboro's Lady Lara, Baffle Me, and Lori Store. At Stanford has been taken over at the top of the stretch by Sandiva. Sandiva! Turns for home in front. And a Stanford is back running in second. Party now is third. Lady Lara weaving through traffic. Coffee click on the outside is next. Then Kitty Wine. Baffle me. Followed by Marb Rose on the outside. Here's Lady Lara. Lady Lara takes over late from Sandiva. Lady Lara has won. Lady Lara gets up to defeat Sandiva by a neck. Junior Alvarado aboard in 134 flat. A listed stakes winner in England, the Irish bred four year old filly by Excellent Art has two stakes wins in three U.S. starts. The Bill Mott trainee making her first out since finishing second in the grade two Mrs. Revere stakes just over four months ago. Lady Lara has earned $458,000 for Swetnam Stud. Darby Dan Farm Stallion, Perfect Soul, a brilliant grade one winning millionaire and still Keeneland course record holder at a mile. Perfect Soul joins El Prado as the only sons of the great Sadler's Wells to sire a Breeders' Cup winner and a Kentucky Derby placed Colt. Next, from Gulfstream Park, Turf Milers in the Grade 3 Appleton Stakes. War correspondent, the 6-5 to five favorite. Once again, here's Larry Colmus. Into the turn they go, Arapika continues to lead Excaper. Brightling Flyer just off of them. A rail run for the favorite war correspondent. Lochte is three wide. A four wide run for Grand Tito on the far turn. Then Mr. Online and Dramedy, and they're coming to the top of the stretch. Three quarters in 111 and three. And it is Arapika who turns it on at the top of the lane, opening up to Grand Tito. Runs up on the outside of war correspondent. Arapika to catch. War correspondent. And Grant Tito coming. Arapika, war correspondent. Grant Tito, here's war correspondent to win. War correspondent by Claiborne Farm Stallion Warfront runs by Arapika to score by a neck. John Velasquez up in 134 and 4. The Christophe Clement trainee finished third in the Grade 1 Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap in his seasonal debut. The five year old horse was bred in Kentucky by Joseph Allen. 
Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners acquired the winner privately after he impressively won his U.S. debut last September. War correspondent has earned $225,000. Two fairgrounds for the grade two Mervyn H. Muniz Jr. Handicap, slumber the nine to five favorite, John G. Dooley has the call. Inside four furlongs to go. Chocolate Ride leans paroled. Is right there close in tow. It's Chocolate Ride paroled. Coleport gains third. Divine Oath right there. Fourth and rooted to the rail as they round the far turn. Slumber still five lengths in back of Chocolate Ride and paroled. We trail back Potomac River as they come toward the top of the stretch. Paroled has made a move. Paroled just the leader from Chocolate Ride right there toward the inside. Divine Oath now switched out. Slumber charging for Alan Garcia down the center of the course. Coleport is fifth. They're in the final for long. Chocolate Ride finding. Parole battling. And Slumber joins on the outside. It's Chocolate Ride still for Joe Telemo. Chocolate Ride on the wire. Chocolate Ride, the front running winner by half a length over Slumber. A 1 2 finish by Keeneland Sales graduates. Joe Talamo up in 148 flat. That's three consecutive victories over the course for the reformed claimer who was last seen wiring the field in the grade three fairgrounds handicap. The five-year-old gelding by Candy Ride was bred in Kentucky by Brian Kahn and was a $260,000 Keeneland September yearling. Trainer Brad Cox haltered the winner for $40,000 last fall at Churchill Downs on behalf of John Wentworth. Chocolate Ride has earned $342,000, including over $300,000 off the claim. Need a spring break? Catch one through Spendthrift's late season discounted fees on promising young stallions such as Arch Arch Arch, Dominus, Line of David, Patio Prado, and Wilburn. Opportunities are limited and subject to change. Call Des, Mark, or Brian today to book your late season mayor. Jimmy Creed, Distorted Humor's most brilliant son at stud. Faster than distorted humor's Keeneland Stakes record. Out of grade one winner and multiple grade one producer hooked on the feeling. And Jimmy Creed in a scintillating performance today. Jimmy. Booked full in 2014, breed secure in 2015. Spendthrift, the breeder's farm. In the business of breeding horses, timing is everything. Making ovulation more predictable, Sucremate Equine takes the guesswork out of scheduling breedings. Sucremate is the only FDA-approved Deslorelin product indicated for inducing ovulation within 48 hours of treatment. Sucremate is safe, reliable, and results from a large field-based study show Sucremate provides a higher ovulation rate than any other product. Streamline your breeding season with Sucremate Equine. City Wolf and Emma Jane Wilson, outstanding in the Durham Cup. City Wolf won it by two. And City Wolf has covered the leader. And it's City Wolf, and it's just a matter of how much you'll win by. City Wolf going away in the third. City Wolf, a graded stakes footer by leading sire Giants Causeway. And a half-brother to leading sires Ghost Sapper and City Zip, standing at Adina Spring South. A Florida bred. He is not just a racehorse, he is our heart. He is our toil and sweat. He soaks up the bright sunshine, becoming mighty and strong. He feasts on our abundant grass and drinks our mineral rich water. He is a way of life, our champion. His excellence brings us chills as he competes, inspiring us to greatness. He is our purpose, our soul. He is a Florida bred. Wholesome food that's fresh from Florida. You already know how good it is. But did you know that buying locally makes a good thing even better? Food grown here by Florida farmers doesn't need to be shipped as far. That saves fuel and cuts emissions, which helps the environment. Buying Florida-grown products creates jobs and generates revenue, and that helps our economy. Fresh from Florida. Good for the environment. Good for the economy. Good for you. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the Grade 1 Florida Derby coming up in this segment. Three-year-old stakes action is presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. 
We begin with Phillies in the Grade 2 Fairgrounds Oaks. I'm a chatterbox. The 3-5 to five favorite, John G. Dooley, has the call. I'm a chatterbox, now making this move. I'm a chatterbox, has taken the lead with three furlongs to go. Shook up, looms on the outside. Junie has dropped back. Forever unbridled, now moves up outside of Junie as they come toward the top of the stretch. Audrey's double is fifth, then tuck yellow desert valley. Danette is last. I'm a chatterbox, is first past the quarter pole. Three quarters, 111 flat. I'm a chatterbox, coming down toward the final furlong. Shook up is in full stretch toward the rail forever unbridled third. It is I'm a chatterbox. Shook up forever unbridled past the 16th. I'm a chatterbox. The Philly star of the meet. I'm a chatterbox with a hat trick of stakes wins and the Fairgrounds Oaks champion. Odds on favorite I'm a chatterbox by Ashford stud stallion Munnings draws off to defeat Shook up by two and a half lengths. Florent Giroux aboard the Keeneland sales graduate in 144 and 2. A sweep of the three Kentucky Oaks prep races at fairgrounds for I'm a Chatterbox. The filly was bred in Kentucky by her owners, Fletcher and Carolyn Gray. Trained by Larry Jones, I'm a Chatterbox has earned $468,000. I'm a Chatterbox paid $320 to win and is the Malone's favorite of the week. Presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. Next, the Grade 2 Gulfstream Park Oaks. Bird at the wire, the 8-5 to five favorite. Larry Colmus with the call. Around the far turn, asking for money on the outside of Akati's Phaeton. And these two are stride for stride as they round the turn. And now, Danessa Deluxe comes up after them three wide. Divine Aida is down on the inside. Bird at the wire's got three lengths to make up. She's in with a chance after trouble on the backstretch. She's circling up on the far outside. In the meanwhile, Eskin for money is the leader. Danessa Deluxe alongside of her. Bird at the wire's on the far outside. And Divine Aida's fourth are into the stretch. Eskin for money. Danessa Deluxe. Bird at the wire on the outside. These three come into the final 16th together. Eskin for money on the outside is Bird at the wire. These two, Bird at the wire. Eskin for money. Bird at the wire. Wire has won the Gulfstream Park Oaks. Bird at the Wire runs by Eskin for money to score by a length and a quarter. Danessa Deluxe third for a sweep by Canelan Sales Grads. Arad Ortiz Jr. aboard in 147 and 2. Bird at the Wire won the grade 2 forward gal stakes in her seasonal debut. But the Dale Romans trainee came up a neck short to Ikati's Phaeton in the grade 2 Devona Dale stakes. The filly by Summerbird was bred in Kentucky by Lynn and Kathy Jones and was a $23,000 yearling. Bird at the Wire has earned $346,000 for Forum Racing. Bullet Train is a group winning three quarter brother to the great Frankel. His first bowls are yearlings and are outstanding. Contact Crestwood Farm to inquire about Bullet Train. Back to fairgrounds for the Grade 2 Louisiana Derby, international star, the two to one favorite. Once again, here's John G. Dooley. Well, Roland Giroux has the pace in his hands with Stamford in front of the five and a half. Mr. Z now has gained second from Fusaichi Flame third and closer toward the rail St. Joe Bay in fourth. A Day in Paradise is fifth. War Story in sixth and seven from Stamford, who's made a very easy lead in the shadow of the half mile pole. Miguel Mena sends international star in that Ramsey red cap toward the rail. Then we come back to Keen Ice, who's wide at the turn, and DeFondo held up in last. A half mile for Stamford. It's been smooth sailing out in front. 48th and two fifth seconds. Three for longs to go. And Stamford to reel in. Stamford continues to hold on to this lead. St. Joe Bay and Mr. Z. War Story is the wide out in gaining ground. International Star comes up the inside, just in back of the front. International Star now pulls out. They're at the top of the fairground stretch. Three quarters. One minute 13 and one fifth seconds. They come down toward the last. It is International Star. International Star and Stamford, and these two set for a final 16th clash. War Story is third. International Star, International Star again, triumphed in the end. International Star by Fusaichi Pegasus. The Ashford Stud Stallion rallies to defeat Stanford by a neck. Miguel Mena aboard the New York bred in 150 and three. 
The Mike Maynard trainee heads to Churchill Downs after sweeping the Kentucky Derby prep races at fairgrounds. International Star is the second consecutive winner of the Louisiana Derby for owners Kenneth and Sarah Ramsey, who captured last year's edition with Vickers in Trouble. The Ramsey's latest Kentucky Derby prospect was bred in New York by Catherine Boss and Robert Manfuso and was an $85,000 yearling. This victory puts International Star over the million dollar mark in career earnings. DRF Breeding, home of the new Sire Powered Results Tool. Access race results from North America. Visit drf.com slash breeding for additional information. Back to Gulfstream Park for the Grade 1 Florida Derby. Upstart the even money favorite once again. Here's Larry Colmas. Jack Tripp will lead the field to the backstretch with materiality second through an opening quarter mile in 23 and four fifth seconds. Upstart is third to the outside of the top two, just a length off the lead. Then my point exactly, Quimet. It's a knockout is in behind them in a bit of traffic there and just to the inside of Amy's flatter. Indianati is next and Decabris trails the field. Materiality sticks his neck in front of Jack Tripp with five furlongs to go. Now Jack Tripp counters and they're basically on even terms after a 48 and one half mile. An upstart has been sitting just to the outside of the top two throughout here. He's had a perfect stalking trip and they've got a half mile to go. And now materiality and upstart take over and Jack Tripp gives way. Quimet is next. It's a knockout. Is under a ride. He's beginning to move in company with Amy's flatter, but they're seven lengths behind. Materiality and upstart. And they've gone three quarters in one, twelve, and two. Materiality and upstart will come to the top of the stretch. Seven lengths in front of Amy's flatter. It's a knockout, not going with them. Then Jack Tripp on the inside. It is a match race at the top of the stretch in the Florida Derby. And as they turn for home, it's Materiality on the inside, grimly holding off Upstart. Materiality and Upstart, and they're seven lengths ahead of Amy's Flatter down to the 16th pole. Materiality's got the lead. Materiality is putting away Upstart. And Materiality is undefeated. He has won the Florida Derby. Nine to five, second choice. Materiality takes the stretch duel with Upstart by a length and a half. The third graded stakes victory on the card for John Velasquez. The Keeneland sales graduate clock in 152 and won a 110 buyer speed figure. A first out maiden winner sprinting six furlongs over the track in his three-year-old debut, the Todd Pletcher trainee stretched out to nine furlongs to score an impressive five and three-quarter length victory in the Isla Murata handicap. The colt by a fleet Alex was bred in Kentucky by John D. Gunther. A $400,000 two-year-old purchase by Alto Racing, Materiality has earned $656,000. The Colt was consigned <laughs> by Glenwood Farm to the 2013 Welcome, Keeneland September Gillespie yearling Gillespie. sale, where he was originally purchased by Venture 6 for $260,000. Undefeated Grade 1 Florida Derby winner, Materiality, the Keeneland sales graduate of the week. Coming up, a home team victory in the Dubai World Cup. Close one forty at one thirty forty. If you get forty, if you get one forty, if you get one thirty. Out of it, get down eighty-seven, ninety pound, out of it, out of it, get down ninety grand, but a ninety thousand, out of it, out of it, get down ninety. Derby winner Needles in 1956, Florida has produced 50 national champions. The last Triple Crown winner, 13 classic winners, 155 millionaires, memorable performances, and 26 Breeders' Cup winners. Produce your next champion in Florida. New 
Wood Ashford for 2015 Ferrazano. Brilliant winner of his first five starts, including the Grade 1 Wood Memorial. And they're coming down to the finish, and it will be Ferrazano! And the Haskell, by a record nine and three-quarter lengths, earning a buyer figure of 116, the highest of any three-year-old in 2013. And Ferrazano and John Velasquez have blown away! Verrazano, a great looking son of more than ready, knew at Ashford. Since 2000, runners by Pin Oak Stallions have won some of racing's most important stakes races and include Eclipse and Sovereign Award champions. Pin Oak is home to leading sire Broken Vow, sire of over 100 stakes horses, and Sky Classic. Pin Oak also stands young graded stakes winners, Cowboy Cow and alternation. Pin Oak Stud, stake success is our goal. Time now for the feature race of the week presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. It's the 20th running of the $10 million Dubai World Cup. Horse of the year, California Chrome, the four to five favorite in international wagering. Here's the call by Terry Spargo. 400 meters in 25.6, 800 meters in 49.4, and down the back of the track, Hokko Tadamai by three parts of a length to African Story. California Chrome's a length away. He's third, but he's traveled wide from the word go. Lee is fourth, Long River under pressure. Prince Bishop's making ground. He's running on from the back. Then Candy Boy, Ephaphanea and Side Glance had dropped out to the rear. Hoko Tadamai, a half length in front of African Story. California Chrome has loomed up three deep. Lee behind them. Prince Bishop is deep around as they turn the corner. Hoko Taramai in front of California Chrome and Prince Bishop on the outside. Lee's into the clear. He'll have to give them two lengths. Prince Bishop in front with 250 metres left to go. Prince Bishop's got away from California Chrome. Then Hoko Taramai and Lee. But it's the Prince. Prince Bishop and William Buick. Prince Bishop is clear and Prince Bishop wins the 20th Dubai World Cup. 17 to 1, Prince Bishop defeats California Chrome by two and three quarter lengths while Lee closes into third, William Buick up in 203 and 1. The seventh winner of the Dubai World Cup for trainer Saeed Bin Sur. Prince Bishop enjoyed the home track advantage after finishing second to last year's winner, African Sky, in the Group 1 Al Maktoum Challenge. At the age of eight, the Irish bred gelding by Dubawi becomes the oldest winner of the Dubai World Cup. Prince Bishop has a bankroll of just over $7 million. The winner races in the colors of Sheikh Mohammed's son, Sheikh Hamdan Al Maktoum. And we'll see you next week here on Thoroughbred Week. The Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture present Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson. Also presented by Adina Spring South, Daily Racing Farm, Double Diamond Farm, Getaway Farm, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Ocala Breeders Sales Company, Pleasant Acre Stallions, Valerie Daly of Showcase Properties, and Woodford Thoroughbreds.